We're at uh, Productronica 2019 in Munich. It's day one. Um, I'm joined by John Kampfer from Kodiak Assembly. Hi, John. Hello. Um, now, as a, an EMS company at these sort of events, what, what are you looking for when you walk around a show like this? What, what interests you? Well, there's two flip sides to this. Obviously, as a contract manufacturer, we're at the show uh, to see new technology, equipment, processes. Um, that's a foundation of any successful CM is, is your equipment. Um, the flip side is just exposure. So we're here today talking, and that's part of uh, just selling the Kodiak story and, and background. And you began some 15 years, you say? Yeah. We are celebrating our 15th yeah. year anniversary in October. Um, we've grown from 10 people to 70 employees, from 10,000 square feet to 60,000 square feet. So we've been uh, enjoyed some success over the last 15 years. Yeah. Uh, another unique feature of our company is we have the same core executive team um, at Kodiak from day oh, one really? to today, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Yeah. So that's provided us kind of a unique uh, feature to support our customers and provide excellent customer yeah. service. I was going to ask, what, what have you seen change in 15 years? But actually, I could ask, what have you seen change in the last 15 months? Because change seems to be speeding up. From our time. perspective, we're... SMT centric type of company. We provide all the other services, but our core competency is SMT. So from our point of view, when we first started the packages and the pitch and the size of the packages, you could see with the human okay. eye and now everything is microscopic. So we're placing 01005 components, 0.3 millimeter pitch CSBs, to large IOBGAs and LEDs and other Last five years, LEDs are on everything. They're from emergency vehicles to obviously lighting. Um, and that's a unique placement feature in and of itself. Um, so just from the packaging and placement and the microscopic uh, miniaturization of the components, we find to be a big, big change. And it, you know, if you've had that same management in place those 15 years, there's a reason for that that you know it's working well but also they must still feel fresh with it and it's you know we you do we i'm president of the company but also very involved and we have engineering manager that's very hands-on and a you know purchasing manager is very hands-on and really the synergistic effect of all that is we've been doing the same thing for 15 years at a very high level and we're able to pass it on to our customers we, we hear a lot about Industry 4.0 and you know smart factories. At the heart of all of that, it's about driving efficiency, isn't it? You know, do it you is. We are a very lean company. We always have been, and that's also part of that that core exec team and being hands on. Um, but it's also part of that lean and smart factory is we don't batch anything. Nothing in our factory takes 15 days. We build a thousand boards, they're going through the factory in five to seven days. So you can add a lot of technology as the backbone to track things and label, and we do that. But really the, the efficiency that we find is, is building it from start to finish and get out the door. Right, yeah. High quality, no returns. We don't have an RM, RMA department to support defects. It's 95% on time, out the door, right the first yeah. time. Yep. And what, what are you looking for in the, the equipment you buy and source when you look around here? What, so what helps with that? So we're looking at, we, we, we've got a core uh, relationship with Fuji America. So our SMT needs are pretty much taken care of. And we've, we've added to that over the last five years. For example, we've had four machines. We've got nine machines total, three lines. Um, but we're, we're looking at things like selective solder, uh, high cost in America's labor. So yeah. any time yeah. that you can uh, make that more efficient, more accurate through a machine, that's something we're looking at. Um, verification means such as AOI, flying probe testing, things like that, that we can be nimble, yep. react to our customers, but ensure a high quality end product. Mm -hmm. Interesting, you know, the workforce. I mean, certainly in the UK and in Europe, there's a, there's a, well, worldwide, there's going to be a skill shortage because, the, you know, millennials are retiring. We're in Austin, um, Texas, so we're, we're, we're amongst a hotbed of uh, Apple adding yeah. jobs, yeah. Intel's there now, AMD has been adding jobs and doing well. Yeah. Um, labor is a yeah. challenge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we don't lose anyone, so that's a good thing. Right. We have very low yeah. turnover, even at the at the operator level. I've got 
half my workforce I worked with you know, from day one. So uh, we've created a company culture that allows us to right. yeah. nurture that, and we've got family members coming right, into right. the company yeah. from yeah. from uh, you know older older yeah. employees. So um, we try to imp promote from within where we can, but it, labor is a big challenge. Yeah. So. And it's it's one another thing that's talked about a lot is about facilitating skills within the existing workforce. There's a lot of talk about augmented reality where you could wear glasses or something that gives you, you know, information about that machine you're on or information about the process you're doing or allows you to feed back more quickly. Do you think that's going to come, you know, we talk about smart factories, but a smart workforce is one of the things that can actually help. I efficiency. think in our world, the smart workforce is back to what I touched on earlier, which was we're looking for equipment to maybe eliminate defects, lower our labor costs, um, perhaps track that product through through the factory, things like that. Um, those are very interesting other elements, um, and certainly some of that technology is in some of the tools that we'll be looking yeah. at at the show, um, but not directly in, no, in our factory no. today. And I think, again, it's one of these things that it, the idea is great, but it's got to work in practice, hasn't right, it? It's got to right. be definite it, examples of where this actually and, and fits where in. humans can interact with like yeah. VR and things yeah. like that so yeah. um, uh, you know the, the challenges you face you must so your customers are asking for greater miniaturization great density on the boards are you finding that when you go to your suppliers we need this 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 needs to be different are they responding quickly it's that's a that's a, a process, uh, not necessarily instantaneous. So, um, as components miniaturize, as you know, use LEDs in, as an example. There's a great many of very bright, beautiful, uh, aesthetically pleasing LED lighting, but from a manufacturing point of view, it's it's almost in its infancy in terms of how a machine can pick up an LED. They've got soft domes sometimes. They've got odd shapes. They've got large shapes, small shapes, everything in between, and the equipment hasn't quite caught up, and they haven't met the equipment uh, yeah. dead on. So we're, yeah. we're, those are challenges that we meet every day, um, and it does, it's not instantaneous. Just because you invent a component uh, doesn't mean that manufacturing's ready for it. The designers have to design a, a PCB, a footprint. Yeah. Uh, those type of elements all take time to, to work through. Um, but you know, Kodiak's here to do that, and, and obviously the, the supplier base is pretty willing to work even with a company our size. We've had uh, Cree in to talk to us, right. um, LumaLED in to talk to us, people like that. So um, it's a collaborative effort and a challenge. Fantastic. Well, thanks for talking to us. It's Here's been a pleasure. to the next 15 years. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.